here's today's session. Um, it's just row 1.25 times your assessment distance in 30 minutes and then step up 1.25 your assessment reps in 30 minutes. That's it, it's real simple. Let's take just a look at the first one. Now in general, for this entire cycle, you can either run or row. Here it's full on winter, we can't really run outside without you know, risk of slipping and stuff like that. So we're in here on the rowers. Now it says row 1.25 times your assessment distance in 30 minutes. So let's look at an example. Let's say uh, AJ squared away rode 4,000 meters in 20 minutes during the assessment. Which means that for today's session, he's going to do 4,000 meters times 1.25, just like it says here, and that equals 5,000 meters. So AJ has to do 5,000 meters in 30 minutes. So let's calculate his, his time per 500 meters, because we know how much he has to row uh, in, in the total time. But on most rowers, it measures uh, your time per 500 meters. Uh, and we're used to calculating meters per time or distance over time. Now we're, we're calculating time per distance. So if we take 30 minutes, the total time, divided by 5,000 meters, then we're going to figure out how many minutes it takes to row a single meter. Obviously, this is a very low number. It's a very small number. But then if we multiply the number that we get here by 500, then we'll get how long it takes, how many minutes it takes to row 500 meters. This will be less than uh, the amount of time that it took, or, or actually it'll, it'll be a greater time per 500 meters than you saw in your assessment. So let's look at our philosophy then. Why do I want you to do a lower intensity today? The philosophy behind this endurance cycle is that if we do low intensity efforts and high intensity efforts for different periods of time, different durations, then we're going to develop multiple energy systems. Body has more than one energy system. In order to develop those energy systems, we have to do different in intensities for different periods of time. So for today's effort um, in general, and we'll look, at, we'll look at step ups here in a second, but in today's uh, effort, we're going to have, we have 30 minutes to do the row, for example. Well, 30 minutes is 50% more time than the assessment. The assessment was 20 minutes. If we take 20 uh, minutes and we multiply it times 0.5 or 50%, then we get 10. If we then add that 10 back into the 20, so 20 times 1.5, we get 30 minutes. Okay, so it's 50% more time that we're going to do the work. Now, 1.25 distance is 25% more distance or 25% more work. Therefore, you're going to do 25% more work in 50% more time than the assessment. Therefore, you're going to have to be at a lower effort or you're going to get done before the 30 minutes is up. So figuring out your pace and learning how to pace yourself at the low intensity is a really important aspect to understand for this. Now, you can pace it just sort of intuitively 5,000 meters in 30 minutes, or you can kind of go through, you know, 30 divided by um, whatever your 1.25 time distance is, and then times 500. Pretty simple calculation. I want you to understand how that gets you where you're getting, um, but in all, it, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is take 30 divided by 1.25 times your your assessment distance, and then take that times. 500. Okay, so you'll you'll do this first, and then you'll do that, and then you're going to get your time per 500 meters. So time per 500 meters. Okay, that's simple calculation. Now let's look at step ups. Step ups. We're actually gonna we're gonna do a distance per time or a step up per time. So it's it's a little bit easier calculation than what we're used to seeing. So again, step up 1.25 times assessment reps in 30 minutes. So in our example, let's say AJ does 500 step-ups in 20 minutes. He's not very, he's not very good at step, doing step-ups. But anyway, so 500 times 1.25 is 625 step-ups in 30 minutes. Okay. So if we take 625 divided by 30, then we're going to get our step-ups per minute. So that equals 20.8 or 21 step-ups per minute. Now let's look at let's look at how this is easier. Okay, during 
AJ's assessment, his pace was 500 divided by 20, because 500 step ups in 20 minutes equals 25 per minute. So he was at a faster pace than what he has to do today. So he has to slow his pace down today. The idea, though, is that we're going to do a greater volume. We're going to do 625 today, but we're going to do it at a lower intensity. So we're going to do more total work, but we're going to have less power, because power is work per time. Since we're doing 25% more work and 50% more time, that's less power that we have to put out. But again, that allows us to do greater volume and it allows us to repeat that effort day after day after day. So our cumulative volume really adds up as the weeks go by in this cycle. So on the other side of that, looking back at our philosophy, low intensity efforts, that's what we've just described, and high intensity efforts for different periods of time develop multiple energy systems. So let's look at what we're gonna do on Tuesday. It'll be something like this. We actually did this last week. Um, so we're going to do four rounds, and then you're going to row or run 0.27 your assessment distance in five minutes, and then you're going to rest for two minutes. That's what the circuit's going to look like. Now let me let me take a second here and say that this run portion, you're going to you're going to do everything the same. Let's say you run three miles or whatever. If you find out your meters. Um, how many meters three miles is in 20 minutes, then you're going to multiply those meters times 0.27, and that's how, how far you're going to run in five minutes. So it works the exact same whether or not you're rowing or running. Okay, so let's look at our example. AJ rode 4,000 meters during his 20 minute assessment, just like before. So 4,000 meters times 0.27 equals 10,080 meters in five minutes. Okay? So how is this a higher intensity? Well, because during his assessment, AJ rode 1,000 meters in five minutes. Now he's got to row 1,080 in five minutes. So he'll have to row harder in order to make his distance per time. But he should be able to do that because he's got a shorter duration. He's not going for 20 minutes. He's only going for five minutes. And then he's going to get a rest period as well. So he should be able to recover some, not totally, but some, during this two minutes and then repeat that effort. But as he goes through these four rounds, each effort should become a little bit harder to make. But overall, you're going to end up rowing a greater total volume because you're still doing four rounds, so four times five is still 20 minutes. But it's going to take you longer because you're getting this two minutes as well. So this is 28 minutes total, but you're, you're rowing, you're still rowing farther. And each bout, each uh, effort, is going to be a harder effort than what he experienced at any one five minute block during his assessment. So going back to our philosophy, this is that high intensity part for different durations, in this, in this case a shorter duration, to develop a different energy system in his body. So that's kind of an overview of what we're doing in this endurance cycle um, and kind of how to figure out your numbers, how to use these numbers to come up with your distances. And really we're using these dis distances just to make sure that we can manage your time in the gym uh, effectively, but still scale the efforts to you. One of the difficult things here with endurance stuff is that every athlete is different. Some athletes are geared more towards endurance. Some are geared more towards strength. Um, we can't just put a blanket distance up and expect everybody to be able to do it in, in a gym manageable time. But using this sort of system, then we can make it uh, gym manageable, but also scale it to the individual athlete.